Hello everybody, welcome back. You guys enjoyed the last video so much that I decided I'm going to go ahead and work on my best Halo missions. Um, because the last one was, you know, worst Halo missions. But I got my Halo t-shirt on, I got my Master Chief helmet out, and I also got my ODST one in honor of, you know, everybody enjoying the last one. So without further ado, let's get into the video. We're going to go in the same order as the last video and again, just the first person shooter games. We are not going to do Halo Wars because those are hard to rank based on the same metrics I'm using here. So for Halo Combat Evolved, my honorable mention was Assault on the Con Control Room because Assault on the Control Room has very epic battles. You rendezvous with some marine squads. It's beautiful if you love snow. If you don't love snow, it's probably not as beautiful to you, but I like snow. And it's got really cool encounters. So like when the Pelican's downed, you know, and you rally with the Marines and you go through the tunnels, blah, blah, blah. Not gonna spend much time on honorable mentions because we have the top pick being Truth and Reconciliation. That's probably not everybody's top pick and I completely understand. For me, it's my personal favorite because I love the concept of boarding a Covenant cruiser and, you know, saving the crew from the Pillar of Autumn. And specifically, the setting of it is also what adds on to how much I like it. It's on top of a mesa, and you can see the gas giant that the ring's orbiting, which is really cool. And then you beam up into the uh, you beam up into the belly of the beast, and then you're immediately met with elites trying to stop you. It's just really cool overall. You go through the mission, and of course, since and people say they don't like Truth and Wreck because it's a maze, but think about it. If you boarded an alien cruiser, would you really know how to get around that easy? I don't think you would. So, honestly, through concept, gameplay, scenery, I really like it. And you're like, Do you dis Nightfall for having sniper rifles? I didn't dis night Nightfall for having sniper rifles. I just did for stealth. Halo CE... You can't really do it stealthily, but it's still fun. I don't know why, because the Marines have assault rifles, maybe? I don't know. It's different, you know? But, that's Halo Combat Evolved. It was limited by its time, and the next one, Halo 2, it took it a step up. So Halo 2 was also limited by the hardware it was on, and that's why a lot of the missions in the games are split into two different campaign missions, but overall, they're the same like arc, you know, kind of like if you had a two-part episode in a TV show, Halo 2 has two-part missions that are across two campaign chunks. Because of that, instead of having a runner-up and then a winner, I'm just going to put them together in one. And my two choices were Delta Halo and Regret. This is a really hard choice because like almost all of the missions, except for the ones I listed in the worst missions list, are really good in Halo 2. Of the two, Regret's above Delta Halo, and Delta Halo of course is under it. it and it's because Delta Halo has got an awesome opening cutscene. I love ODST, it's really cool, and you know, it's the first boots on the ground of the Halo Ray, uh, and the thing that draws it down is the fact that a lot of the gameplay on that mission is vehicle based, which I do like vehicle based missions, don't get me wrong, but it's not good if it overly relies on it, but this one doesn't, so it's a tough choice, but the reason regrets above it in my opinion is because it takes all the things I love about the first mission and just keeps on going with it. So the scenery in these two missions are like my favorite thing ever on the Halo franchise. I don't know why it's like rustic forerunner structures. I love it. So it's regret. It takes that art style, keeps going. It's also got cool gameplay mechanics like the gondola and the water elevators. And that takes you through even cooler set pieces like the underground uh, or not the underground <laughs> takes you through the underwater section and then of course onto the islands out on the lake which is beautiful <laughs> on top of the scenery the gameplay and the art style that i loved oh so much there's a boss fight which i think 
if you don't count Hunters, this is the first boss fight in the whole franchise. And it's pretty freaking funny to beat up an old man in a chair, you know? No, nah, but in all seriousness, this is like a really important part of the Halo 2 story, right? It's where Master Chief assassinates the Prophet of Regret. That affects the social structure in the Covenant heavily. And you can even say that maybe it directly contributes to the Great Schism. Even if it was going to happen, this speeded it up, you know. And then the ending where Master Chief is escaping the glassing beam. Oh, I gush. I love Halo 2, but I specifically love these pair of missions so much. It's so good. Let's get on to the next campaign mission. There is something going on downstairs. Also, that reminds me. This might be my last time recording in this area. Because I'm moving into my new house soon, so the content's going to get better because I can do a lot more stuff in my new house. <laughs> and I can talk as loud as I want, so I might start streaming again. But that's a side note. Let's get to Halo 3. So, Halo 3. This one was a tough choice because I already knew the two I wanted to choose between. But when I went and replayed them, it really flipped my expectations for what I was thinking I was going to rank them as. So, the runner-up is the Ark. And by that me saying that, you already know what the winner is. But let's first handle the Ark. It's a beautiful map. You can see the galaxy in the sky. Really cool. It's in a desert, which isn't something you see super often in halo which is a cool um biome to be in honestly fun combat encounters like the sniping in the section or the sniping section in the beginning it doesn't overstay its welcome you kind of just go through it real fast and then you know you're done with sniping you don't have to do it anymore and then you move on to like vehicle sections they don't stay too long it just really flows together right the downside of this mission that puts it below the covenant for me is specifically the scarab fight. You do fight through like two lines of wraiths, right? And that's good. It kind of does what I want from Halo 3, which is larger scale battles. And a lot of the missions do this, but for that specific scarab part, you get to the scarab and then it just trickles in vehicles to reinforce it and you can like deal with them before you're overwhelmed. And I, I don't want to be overwhelmed, but you have such an advantage over that Scarab. It's not really fair to the Scarab. So yeah, I already spoiled it, but the top pick is the Covenant, of course. It has ground, air, and vehicle combat, which is brilliant. And honestly, those sections are really fun. It makes great use of the map, of course, because by dividing these sections up, they're able to cram more entities into each section so that it doesn't feel empty or or vacant the scarab fight is where it all comes together right so over the arcs compared to the arcs scarab fight the scarabs there's two of them so they have much more of an advantage for one but then they also have a ton more backup they have banshees accompanying them, the ghosts don't think there's prowlers or anything but the ghosts and banshees are honestly enough and you can choose to take the tank, the warthog, to fight it. Or you can do my favorite thing. You can hop on the side of a hornet, not into a hornet, on the side of a hornet. And they'll drop you on the scarab while it's walking. So you can go in and destroy it. That's my favorite way to do it, like I said. It's amazing comparably to the arc scarab fight. And um, the friendly flood. Yeah, that part's interesting. And then, of course, you kill the Prophet of Truth. That's funny. So, like, it's really good gameplay-wise. It's really good narratively. It's just, like, probably one of the best fit missions in terms of climax. And then after that mission, it's, like, falling action as you get Cortana. And then, of course, destroy the Flood. I don't feel like that section is as intense as it should be. Um, but that's besides the point. The Covenant's amazing. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Halo 3 ODST. Kekawani Station's really cool because it feels like something ODSTs would do, right? You hijack a phantom and then you escort it out of the city. So you do the scarab fights. Those are very interesting. 
locations to fight scarabs. Um, and then you have like the the engineer hype thingies, and I love the engineers. They're adorable. They need to be protected at all costs. But destroying those things are extraordinarily satisfying. I do say. I don't really have that much to say about this mission. It's just got like a cool, um, cool, cool mission concept. Halo Reach, the runner up for Halo Reach. So I'm keeping you on your seat here. Uh, the runner up, let's tip the spear. Boo, boo, shut your mouth. I'd stop booing. Uh, I have my reasons, trust me. And it's the same logic I used before. If you don't agree with my stuff, that's fine. But the, hear me out, hear me out, okay? So, the reason Tip of the Spear is a runner-up for me is because it has amazing vehicle combat. Destroying the AA guns is really satisfying, right? The Spire segment climax is also really satisfying. Uh, unfortunately, what brought it down to the runner-up for me is you miss out on a large-scale battle because they reduce it to a cutscene. And... Really would have been cool to see just like a little bit more of the stuff you saw in Halo 3, right? With the big uh, armored units. Because I feel like they could have at least done a little bit with it, but they decided not to. So that's what that, that's what holds it back for me. But because it does have a big, large battle that's restricted to the cutscene in the background, it does have some awesome backdrops. <laughs> so. If that's not my top pick, what is you may add? You might if that's not my top pick, what is my top pick, you might ask. My top pick is Long Night of Solace. Mm-hmm. That's right. I chose that one. So, um the story for this mission is you're counterattacking the Covenant, you know, after they are after the events of Tip of the Spear, that supercarrier, you gotta take it out, right? And this mission is really cool. Although, I will say, the Saber gameplay is hit or miss. You may like it, you may hate it. On Legendary, I tend to hate it. But with friends, it can be fun. Boarding the carrier is awesome. And here is where I'm saying, hey, my personal opinion, this is what it's telling me, right? So, I chose, I chose Truth and Wreck, right? On the first mission, specifically because I like that concept. Of boarding the carrier and this one's a similar thing but it takes a ste step up because you're not just fighting and getting people out of there you are taking control of the carrier and sending it to the super carrier so you can blow it up so i think that's like really cool and i talked to my friend too on this one because like i said in the last one hey the reach i've the, my roast tin and glasses have fallen off and it's not the same as it used to be for me and i don't know why but i consulted with him because he still enjoys the game right and he said that he also he, he's stuck between two and his second pick is lone wolf and i feel like lone wolf's too short to even consider on here personally um but his other pick was long night of solace too so i typed the wrong mission title on halo 4 so okay i looked it up i know what it is the top pick i have for halo 4 despite the document saying well otherwise the document's wrong for once the top pick is dawn or the dawn whatever it's called the one where you're on the ford under dawn still right it's got a really strong opening it's a strong opening for the game as a whole not to say anything about the rest of the game but it's a really strong opening uh, you wake up from cryo after the events of Halo 3, right? And then the ship's being boarded. You don't know why the Coven is back, or anything right yet. All the combat scenarios that you get put in during this mission are really fun. And my personal favorite is the space walk that you do, fighting off the EVA Covenant so that you can launch the missile. I really love space walks in games. I always was tempted to mention Cairo Station on Halo 2, but as I said, you know, compared to the rest of the campaign, that's like one of my favorite things in it. And it's got a really intense climax. And number one point for it being here, you don't have to deal with Prometheans. So take that as you will. The runner up 
This is really funny, by the way. This is the only mission that somehow made it into both lists. The runner-up is Midnight, because I replayed it, right? And I decided I was too hard on this. Um, Midnight, broad se broadsword section, really phenomenal, really fun. Really good climax for the story you're trying to tell. You are trying to stop the didact from carrying out his plan. You get there a tad bit too late, but you're still able to stop him through sacrifice of Cortana and stuff. Uh, solid ending, but also a sad ending. So that's why it's a runner up. Um, some of these sections drag though, so it couldn't be the best, but it got itself up there with that. <laughs> and then on to Halo 5. I'm not gonna do what I do, did in the last video, where I just put in literally a frame for Halo 5. It got all of one frame for the video. Um, the top pick for Halo 5 is the Battle of Meridian. Uh, it's the top pick because this is the mission where Master Chief kicks Spartanok's butt and it's really funny. Skill issue. You can't give Halo 5 too many points for any of its narrative story because it's kind of yucky and messy and all that. But some people like the gameplay and that's fine. But honestly, this is my favorite part of the game because you get to see Master Chief go ham. Halo Infinite. Top pick. Hands down. Pelican down. <laughs> Always, I don't have a script. My script here is just notes. And when I said uh, hands down, it was like, it's not a rhyme or anything. It just sounded bad. That's why I'm apologizing. I'm going to hop around to my bullet port points here. So the reason this mission, in my opinion, is so good is because it's not super open and free like all the other missions in the game. Like I said, the sequence in the last video where I sat down was the worst. A lot of the reason it was docked was because it was super draggy because you're traveling across the map doing stuff. This mission does basically the opposite of it. It restricts you to one area with one objective. And it's really cool. Um, I forget how you get in the situation, but of course, as the mission title says, Pelican is down and you have to go and take down AA emplacements. And with that, it's progressing the narrative with each AA you take down. And then once you get all the AAs offline and you go back to the Pelican, you are stuck in a boss fight with two pretty cool designed brutes. The, the way they combo together is really cool. One stays at range with a cannon, the other one's on a vehicle. Um, and then overall narratively, it sets up a higher stakes for the campaign later. And it's just overall more grounded than any other mission in the game. And that's why it's my favorite. Other ones are also like, other ones do keep you on a straight and narrow kind of thing. But this one, I feel like it feels the most natural transition to do it. So... Those have been my picks for the best missions in all the FPS Halo games, by the way. Not Halo Wars or anything. Tell me your picks in the comments below. So, uh, with that, I want to thank everybody who watched the last video and came back for this one. And I hope to see you in the next video. And if you have any videos you'd specifically like to see, put them in the comments, whether it be more lists like this or I can do some lore explaining. But I hope everybody enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.